javascript is not a class based object oriented language rather a prototype based prototypes are objects so internally javascript does not have any classes however javascript has introduced a keyword called class which allows us to define classes in a simple manner it can have fields or properties which can now even be truly private constructor getters and even getters and setters this of course apart from methods which are not only automatically put into the prototype but do not have prototype of their own let's take a look at the code here let's say we define this class called account add a static field called count define a few instance field like account number holder's name balance and define the constructor to assign to those fields let's add two methods deposit withdraw and maybe a getter which returns the account balance so we have defined a class now let's go ahead and instantiate an object so i am saying andrewson is equal to new account carry out from deposit and withdraw and print it so let's run this it says account number is 2 holder's name is mark balance is 0 because we put in 2000 deposited 5 and withdrew all of it leaving the account 0 now we can also extend classes in javascript so let's take a look at this you can say class saving account extends an existing class account but what happens internally when we do this see whenever we define a class or a function internally it creates a function object in the heap memory this function object not only has prototype which is the parent but it also has well confusing name prototype as the companion object so this prototype here or proto points to the parent whereas this prototype actually points to the companion object that companion object points back to the function object through a property called construct the function object has a parent and the prototype also has a parent that's why it's a prototype based object oriented language so even though we have defined a class we are not getting classes we are getting objects and prototypes when we define methods here they go into the prototype object reason when we create multiple objects all of them would land up sharing these withdraw and deposit method rather creating a copy of their own so what happens when we say extends well in this case a new function object is created called savings account and guess what its proto or the parent points to the original account but not just this the prototype of this new savings account also points to the original prototype as its parent 
So this is what happens when we define a class. And this is what happens when we inherit or extend the class. Now, if we create an object out of this, new savings account, this object points to this as its parent, the prototype of savings account. And if we know about prototype chaining in JavaScript, if I go and ask Ike what's the account number, it finds it here. If I ask I deposit something, it starts the search from here, doesn't find it, goes to its parent, no deposit here either. So it goes to parent's parent, finds the deposit and executes it. However, if we override the withdraw method, that is write it once again, in savings account, this withdraw method goes into the prototype of savings account. So if we say Ike dot withdraw, it looks it up here, not found, go here, finds it and therefore executes this one which is here and not this one which is here. So let's switch to code and see how this works. I'm going to define savings account class. And say it extends account. Now in this case, I'm going to redefine the withdraw method. Right now, I will only put a statement here saying savings account withdraw. Now, let's run this code again by creating a savings account object. It says it is calling savings account withdraw. Let's comment it out and call it, now it's saying it's reaching up to accounts withdraw which has been defined here. So by overriding this or by writing this in derived class, it gets inserted into the property, sorry, prototype chain so that withdraw would be called from here, but deposit would be called from here. So now we can go ahead and implement some logic here. For example, if the balance minus amount is going below 1000 rupees, in which case we will throw an error saying insufficient balance. If not, we will call the base withdraw and say, okay, this is not insufficient balance, you can go ahead and do this. Now when we run this code, we would see an exception which says insufficient balance because we have total 7,000 and we are trying to draw all 7,000. Let's change this to 4,000 and the code goes through. The balance has been reduced. And the savings account code got called here. The reason why we are seeing this is because it eventually calls the base account withdraw. So this is how inheritance and overriding works in JavaScript and this is what happens in memory when we create classes 
an extreme level. 